What's up guys, Vortex here and welcome to another video of toy reviews and for today's video I present to you the Alien Queen deluxe action figure from NECA Toy Lines. Just look at this beauty, she is gorgeous and she comes with so much articulation in her joints it's unbelievable. Some of those joints, like the hips for example, they are pretty unstable and might actually just fall off, so that's slightly annoying, but besides that, a great piece. I'm just gonna use her for display purposes, but if you want an action figure oriented piece, maybe this one isn't perfect. It's... you get bang for your buck when you pay for this, and maybe after spending that amount of money, maybe you don't really want to play around with it, so I suggest cheaper pieces if you want to have an actual action figure. But let's go over some details. First, her webby face hugger looking hands are magnificent looking. They manage to capture the, um, the the thin the thin exoskeletal structure perfectly. And what also helps is the outlining with blue and blackish as well as bronze goldish colors, you know, to increase depth. It also brings out the biomechanical uh, features you can see in a lot of her joints uh, yeah behind the knee there it looks gorgeous S at some places I think they could have spared some of the blue like in the tail <sighs> the inner parts of the tail look perfect but at the tip there is a bit too much blue I think so not a perfect figure I also would have appreciated a more glossy look if you can see by the crown here this shines so much while the back of the figure is a bit more matte I would have liked this shiny glow for the entire figure and I have seen set pieces of this particular figure with that glow and I am so curious why my figure doesn't have that so that's a bit disappointing but besides that, she is a great piece, and she actually comes with a small feature. See if I can set up the camera so you can see it. Now, I had to adjust the lighting a little bit for this to work, but yeah, it's okay, I suppose. Now, if you remember in the movie, where when Ripley first encounters this beast in her lair, she's introduced hanging from the ceiling with her webbings and the egg sac, and then her head sort of comes out from beneath the crest. And NECA has actually implemented a feature that allows you to pull the crest back and forward across her head like this. It looks a bit goofy, but I appreciate the, the adding a feature so you can pull it back and reveal the head. So that's a cool feature, unnecessary, but cool. Uh, due to the fact that she is so top heavy, they actually included a display stand for her with two metal rods that uh, protrude from the stand. And you can have the short one that I have equipped right now, or you can have this longer one uh, if you want her standing on a little more upright position but I prefer her more prone so she looks a lot more menacing you know you can look down on those nasty space marines trying to invade her lair the most amazing feat of this feature I would have to say is the size she is massive she is like when when the uh, the guys at NECA fan group told me that she is the size of a small dog. They didn't lie. Here she is, <clears throat> standing next to my T800 4 inch action figure. And yeah, <laughs> she towers over him. Both creations of James Cameron. And uh, she can pick him up and pretty much ragdoll him. Another set of scale, we have a regular can next to her. She can even hold that. If you position the hand right, I suppose you could align it so she could hold it. Yeah. Nice. She could like hang beer up and we can pick it off her and stuff. I don't know. So yeah, we also have the 
the uh, secondary set of jaws that comes with the figure. She is now being displayed without any secondary sets of jaws at all, but you can insert this short set into her mouth. These are pretty picky to get in there, so I might not be successful right now, but yeah, th this is the best you're gonna get. Can't really see them, but if you open her mouth, they will be displayed gorgeously. Then there is also this long set of jaws, so if you want to display her with the with those stretched out, you can do that as well. And I really appreciate that they bring that option into consideration, so that you can actually choose how you want to display her. There's a slight problem with this though, which annoys the fuck out of me. The fact that the, the jaw is attached to a small hole in the back of her mouth, like so, this is how it's gonna look. See how it like sort of leans on the upper row of her teeth when you really would want it to protrude like this. It's gonna look like this. So it's gonna look like she will she would punch out her upper jaw uh, with the with the second row of teeth when you really want it to protrude at this kind of an angle. But it doesn't. It comes out like this, which looks a bit stupid. So I just have her mouth closed like she's scheming or whatever. Uh, her big set of hands are pretty well articulated, maybe not the smoothest joints, but they still move, so you can position her however you want. Uh, and her second set of hands, they are on a ball joint at the end, and they, uh, yeah, they have a combination of various ar articulations, but they are pretty fiddly, but they work I suppose. The tail is fully articulated, I don't want to change it now since it took a while to actually get this uh, without having a almost too perfect of a bow. I wanted some bendings to show that it's more of a natural, you know, slithery tail. It took a long while to actually achieve that effect and uh, as well have uh, so that she can lean on, on her tail since she is very top heavy. So, but the tail is fully articulated. My biggest complaint about the figure is the dorsal spines. They are very fiddly and they don't even come equipped to the to the queen. You have to attach them yourself. And they took a long while and a lot of effort to get in there. Uh, I have fairly big hands, so I even offered one of my friends to come over since she has very small hands to actually put them in. But uh, me and my dad actually ended up doing it ourselves. We took like small pincers and a wire cutter and just fucking smashed that shit in there. So now it's in there. But if it falls out, I'm afraid that if I redo the procedure, one of them might break. So that's pretty bad. But once they're on there, they look fine. It's cool. Just that they are fiddly. They feel like they could fall off at any time, which they can. But I suppose that's everything. I really appreciate uh, me picking up this figure. It's a nice treat for myself. Great add-on to, to the collection. She will be added into the collection cabinet right here underneath the DeLorean. The lighting sucks right now if I turn this. Yeah, right here underneath the DeLorean she will be added. And it's gonna look gorgeous. I probably also should note that in the box she also comes with this uh, display background if you want to set up some sort of um, <coughs> diorama. And it's cool, it's fine I suppose. I'm gonna stick that in there in, in the cabinet as well and yeah, try to get some sort of diorama effect. You get like the the floor gate effect from uh, LV426 and a lot of slimy walls with a small, ah, the lighting, fuck, with a small Wayu logo in, the, in there and it looks nice. And some lightning, either from the atmospheric processor going into full meltdown or from the lightning storms on LV426. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time on Toy Reviews. Get away from her, you bitch!